but mommy's still producing milk and mommy will make sure that it is safely transported to and from the kill sites that she will take them to. So as I said, definitely not a, a death sentence. And a very good point from Aretas Fox. And it's a difficult question to answer. So Aretas Fox would like to know how we recover from the tragedies that the wild does have. And of course we get to see the most amazing things. And at the same time, sometimes things are very painful to watch. From the buffalo calf that we saw the other day, struggling to get up, to the story of Kutile, although that wasn't something we had to witness, and her snake bite, the leopard with the snake bite, and now this little injured cub. And the question is, how do we recover? Is it not, ment is it not mentally draining? Um, yes, it is. And little, you know, each, each little heartbreak is there and constant. But you do get used to, not used to, that's the wrong way of, talk wrong way of phrasing it, if you didn't get used to it though, you would be constantly broken hearted out here. What hurts me, well, the way that I can, not justify it, but the way that I deal with it in my own mind, is to remember that this is the way of things for as long as these animals have existed. It's when it's a man induced injury that it really truly upsets me. I mean, when it's a situation where an animal's been poached or snared or, that is where I truly struggle. and. It does, it does take somebody a long time to recover from the emotional wounds that, that seeing something like that inflicts. But seeing the natural order of things, you can't, you can't just take the good out of it. You have to be able to, if you want to be able to enjoy what's happening out here, you kind of have to be able to lump the bad as well. But I mean, Brian, you said you were watching that buffalo kill the other day, mm. and it was incredibly difficult to witness. It mm. was for us as well. Was, and, but the thing is, in the heat of the moment, you don't realize it, and it's only when you get home and you're shaking, and you've got the buffalo bellows in your ears, that you realize what it is that you've witnessed. I can't give you an easy answer to that question. I think you, get, you do get used to it in a way, and you have to sort of harden your heart a little bit. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. And watching a cub like this limp around is really, truly horrible to witness. It's just, it's, if it were a leopard cub, it would be very, very concerning. But the fact that it's a lion cub, it's a lot more positive. Oh, little big yawn. Such a tired baby. No, it can still do some yoga. Stretch it out, baby. <laughs> very peaceful, beautiful family scene. And what makes me very happy about this, it's, it's sort of connected to the, quest, the question I've just answered. What makes me happy about sightings like this is I think we've become so emotionally invested, particularly for me, because I didn't spend that much time with the Styx Cubs before, or the Styx Pride. They spent a lot of time south. But especially for me, I feel very emotionally invested in the Inkuhumas. I spent so much time with them watching them, watching them go through the Birmingham boy takeover, their brokers for peace when they were trying to mate with them, even though they knew that the Birminghams were still aggressive. So seeing these little cubs is a triumph. Right, it seems as though Cheetah Plains is bringing the jackal luck. Let's go back across to Brent and see which jackal he's got this time. <laughs> 